Hello and welcome. Mini Menon, the chairperson of the Western region of the Indian Women's Network joins us. Mini, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, uh, the World Economic Forum says that India struggles to demonstrate solid progress towards gender parity. Now, how, uh, uh, how true is that and how can India really bridge this gap? I think it is really true and I think uh, many countries have not been able to bridge the gender parity and I think in India we have uh, many layers to the problem and the challenge. Having said which, I think uh, it is important to uh, spread the message of what work has been done and what the potential work can be. And I think uh, an Indian uh, women's network is a classic example of one such attempt because it's based on two basic principles. The first, that wherever women have been given a platform and a level playing field to perform, they have shown, you know, if, if you actually look at it, the three, four big programs that have had a big change and have been change leaders, be it a Seva, be it Amul, be it the Grameen Bank, has been led by women. So that's one principle. So we want to create that same kind of platform where women can come and, and the platform can reach out to women. The second principle is the fact that all of us out here in Mumbai and the, at the launch represent a very small iota of India which has had the opportunity. You know, we have fought small battles to get where we have, and each one of us has our own life story. But having said which, I think it pales into insignificance as compared to the larger battles that women across India are fighting on a daily basis. So can we take successful women, women who've taken that leap of faith, who've, who've got the opportunity, who are independent, and take their message of success, their real life examples of success, to a broader community and that's one of the big things that we are looking at. Okay, you know, uh, it's interesting that, that you say that uh, uh, you, you're talking about urban India right now, but uh, uh, women participation in the workforce and even women entrepreneurship in rural India is actually an example that perhaps urban India could learn from now. Would you agree with that? In pockets, yes, Pyle, but I don't think it's fully true. I think uh, if you look at uh, what's worked over there, it's worked really well when they've had the opportunity and a cooperative which has allowed them, has given them financial independence and allowed them to flower. I think what has worked, I mean in the banking sector I could argue is a great example of what women have been able to achieve today. Indian banking is controlled by women. You know, the biggest banks in India are run by women or headed by women. So wherever there is an opportunity, I'll reiterate that women have done well. But have we created enough opportunities, rural, urban, semi-urban, tier two, tier three? Are there enough opportunities being created? Are women aware that, hey, you know, it's okay to stand up and ask questions. It's okay to stand up and demand. It's okay to be able to control your own finances. So we have actually looked at partnerships where we want to mentor students. We want to connect corporate women or employees to uh, be those mentors for uh, students. We want to work with entrepreneur networks. We want to get women to be financially secure and know about their finances. So we've in, uh, you've partnered with an organization that helps this. And we also want women to be taking charge of their health issues. So this is just a small example of what we can do. But I think this movement will reach critical mass only if it is uh, got the support of everyone, both in terms of time and intent. And we have many, many collaborations to uh, make it work. Uh, you know, many opportunities is one part of this story. Participation itself is another part, sure. you know. So how are you uh, uh, working towards perhaps gathering that momentum in terms of participation? At three levels, Pyle. At the first level, at the student community. Because I think uh, a lot of uh, uh, young women students have to be given role models that they can relate to. Very often they don't have access to that. So the moment you have working women going and speaking and mentoring students, I think that's the first opportunity. The second participation problem is really at the junior to mid level in careers where statistics show that 60% of women actually fall off the workforce because they have families to start, they have concerns at home or, or, or challenges at home. We want to bridge that gap. So there are lots of positive stuff happening out there. For instance, the second careers program, SKIP, that the Tata has run. That's a wonderful example of what can be. Can you reskill, retrain women? to actually get back to work and, and or give them flexi hour work opportunities. In India, there is no dearth for educated young women who can give back. You can, you can tie, tie them up with NGOs, get them into corporates, etc. So that's one engagement that we are looking at. The other level of participation is that we all have women who are educated 
who are not necessarily working. They don't need the finances or they don't need, don't want the, they don't have the opportunity. But can we engage with them? I think there are lots of levels at which we can increase participation. And of course, I mean, you can't fix all the problems in India, but you can make a start somewhere. Yes. Yeah. How important is it, uh, you know, for women to actually have the right work-life balance? I think it's important for everybody to have work-life balance because that gives you perspective. And as some, uh, as one of the panelists, Anjali Rana, I think said, you can't let work suck out the life out of life. You know, at the end of the day, I think work is important, but life is important. And you should also remember that the people you work for are actually at home waiting for you to come back. So I think it's very important. And I think that's where women have to increasingly push back and say, hey, you know, we need our personal time because and also men, actually, it shouldn't be something only women do. But I think uh, it'll be great if women can actually stand up and say that. Yeah, because, you know, uh, if you ask most successful women what, what they've missed out, they always talk about uh, uh, you know not having the right work life balance hmm. so uh, uh, you know how, uh, uh, do we require a change in the environment do we require women to uh, you know change their attitude towards work or what is it that is required for one to strike this you know i think pile the two things that are changing one is the real dearth of talent i think uh, organizations are understanding that you're not just talking about being gender sensitive you're talking about engaging with one half of the population and one half of your employees. So you can't afford women to fall off the workforce because at the end of the day, you've invested a lot, they have invested a lot, and they are very, very integral to your success. So I think that's also making organizations be more friendly to women. The second is that look at the example of banking, actually. The more women who come in, the more sensitive men are because their wives are working as well. And that creates a groundswell that allows people to balance off things. I think uh, 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 sectors where you have a lot of women working are always more friendly to other women coming in. And that has a, has a uh, big impact on future generations of women coming in. So I think the more women coming into the workforce, the more beneficial it will be. And yet there is no sector in India which, uh, which, which can claim that it employs 50% of women as its employees or no company which can say that. Yeah, but if, if you see the statistics and they say their own story, right? I mean, 60% of women apparently fall off from the junior to mid level. And it's not because of the fact that uh, there's a glass ceiling out there. It's really because of the fact that they don't have flex ERs. They don't have an opportunity to balance their life and their workplace. And uh, I think that's the big, big lacuna. Which so I, are you saying that the glass ceiling actually doesn't exist? It does exist, but that's not the only factor that women are not making it to the boards or not the only factor that we don't have so many women. And I think I keep going back to banking because it's a great example, Pal. You know, in 1984, I think Tarjani Vakil was the Exim Bank head. And if you ask one whole generation of, uh, of banking heads today, be it a Shikha Sharma, be it a Chanda Kocha, they'll tell you they were inspired by her success. So a whole wave of young uh, business, uh, you know, bankers came into, women bankers came into the scheme of things. And look at where they have gone. It's taken 30 years for that to happen. And I think we are also in a hurry, we are in a tearing hurry, be it in our careers where we want to rise really fast and give up on life and only work. But I think there is something to say about patience and working your way up. There's also a perception that, uh, you know, the, the higher a woman has to rise in ranks, uh, the tougher it gets for her to break the glass ceiling. Would you agree or the, I didn't get the that? question. If the faster you go up? The higher you go up the ranks, hmm. the tougher it is to break the glass ceiling. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think there are not enough women breaking that glass ceiling. And I think uh, it's also a fact that Indian business is dominated by family-owned businesses, which have their own dynamics, and women don't really you know, come through very fast in that. Uh, it is patriarchal. I'm not denying that. But I think it, it is changing. And I think, look at the US. I think we've made great strides in the last two decades. And the US is still struggling to get more women into the corporate workforce, into the boards, etc. So it's a universal problem. Okay, so you know, uh, uh, three things that uh, the India Women Network sees will change in the next five years as far as the participation of women is concerned. In, uh, Sec first, I think uh, women will be more demanding, will ask more relevant questions and get the eye in the picture. I think we do a lot of work for others, for society, for peer groups, for families, but we should start thinking about ourselves. What do we want out of life and how can we pace our careers, pace our uh, our life goals according to what we want you know I think that's the first thing second is that I think there 
is going to be a situation where organizations are going to invest far more on gender diversity, on getting more sensitive, because they have to. With the kind of talent crunch that we have across sectors, you cannot afford not to engage with women. You know, and I think that's one of the most positive things that are happening because there has to be a buy-in. You know, it can't be a one-way street. It has to be a buy-in. Third is, I think, for women itself, the kind of opportunities that are opening up. I'll no generation of women have actually had those kind of opportunities. You know, the kind of stuff that you can do. You can become an entrepreneur. You can you can do flex ERs. You can volunteer and become an NGO. Join an NGO. You can do courses. You can you know lean in and really evolve and develop. You know, you don't need to finish your education in one long sigh. You can keep reskilling and retraining yourself. And I hope a network like IWN actually creates that platform where women can come and look at the opportunities that are available and actually pick and choose what they want to do and also get empowered uh, to be in control of their careers, be in control of their finances, be in control of their health and actually you know, benefit from something like this. Okay, Vinny, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.